So you're moderate? Yes, I'm moderate. Okay. So start as soon as you're ready? Yeah. Good morning, lady, uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, our session um, is on it's an NRI's collaboration session on content regulation, um, um, which is uh, the theme is the security, oh no, the harmful content. Just a minute, please. NRI collaborative session on harmful contents um, on the internet. Uh, we have uh, a number of uh, policy questions that we will be following. And uh, my suggestion is that we can follow the policy questions one by one, then uh, the panelists uh, can be commenting um, on each of them. The first of the policy questions is how can risks of content, how can risks of contact and content be addressed successfully by legal and regulatory approaches as well as by technical instruments and how can digital civility be increased? Um, can, who can, can we have, um, let's start by I hope we understand the question. So can we start by, from, uh, by Jafan? Yes. Hi, my name is uh, Tatesh from Japan. Uh, uh, I'm a vice chair of the uh, Japan Space Providers Association. So <clears throat> uh, for maybe seven or six years ago, so the first, uh, we installed uh, a broking system only for the China child pornography. So uh, in Japan, the, the constitutionally, the, the secrecy of the communication uh, uh, to the violation of that is uh, strictly prohibited. So it, it is not easy. So still we are carrying the legal uh, risks now. <clears throat> but uh, the, the child pornography is uh, 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 very, uh, how can I say, very important human rights. So, uh, we have to do it uh, for the uh, the future of the children. Then we install it. So, uh, so uh, in this point of view, the, it's not easy to uh, block the uh, contents such as uh, uh, pornography or other uh, illegal or harmful information. <clears throat> uh, but uh, uh, but. Uh, but we, we don't have any other uh, measures now in Japan, only for the uh, uh, blocking system, but uh, uh, strictly prohibited only the China pornography. Other, uh, last year, we have a many uh, big discussion uh, about uh, uh, private uh, uh, piracy site of the manga, uh, Japanese manga. So, but we are uh, fighting against for the, to make a law uh, uh, to protect the intellectual property. So, so for now. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative from Japan. And um, he made mention of the fact that uh, um, Japan is making effort on the issue of ch child online protection and um, also um, a number of regulations. So can we have Armenia? Thank you very much. Liana Galstian speaking on behalf of the Armenian IGF. But before we start this discussion, I'd like to thank for all the colleagues uh, for this opportunity to, to create a collaborative session. So this collaborative session, actually, we started uh, two years back. Um, within the IGF scope, and uh, the first year it turned out to be very, very successful. And uh, last year we faced that some of the sessions were not being that uh, uh, well attended, all well organized, so, but we uh, thought that there will be a value still to continue with this, um, bringing the uh, efforts 
of all the NRIs together and uh, having uh, those topics that are in common uh, to share the experiences what we have in our countries. Um, so this year uh, we, we have several topics on this and on this harmful content. I would like to thank all the participants of all these countries that been uh, get together and throughout the whole year I mean, we had coordinated uh, several calls, discussed the policy issues, all the uh, contents, what we have here and not, um, and sharing the practices. Um, so on the perspective of uh, the Ar Armenian experience, what we have on harmful content, um, we as the uh, CCTLD manager, uh, dealing with the um, blog, it's not a blogging, but we, we do have a policy in the registry that those domain names uh, which have a uh, content kind of illegal or harmful that can be for the country or for the uh, perspective of uh, ethnic uh, racism uh, or the uh, fighting there. So the in a policy, it's written that it's not uh, allowed to do such uh, things in the in the website, in a content of the domain name. So this will give us uh, a right to revoke the domain name registration. Uh, and also, the, we can revoke the, the registration in case uh, we have the uh, in the who is the data provided for by the by the registrants uh, incorrect or uh, missing information there so this will give us also right to revoke the registration and domain names uh, but um, there is a, a group um, within the TLDs uh, within the registry, uh, which is a multi-stakeholder in itself, and we do um, include it in this group, the participants, uh, I mean the representatives of police and the national security. So those issues that comes uh, in uh, against the, the uh, raising the issues of uh, national security things, um, taking into account the um, registrations that coming from um, the countries uh, or bringing the racism thing, for instance, that uh, concerning the national security, that instantly goes to, to the police, police department and the national security department. And uh, in this group, uh, these uh, alarms, uh, these uh, notifications coming and discussing within a group, we give them the right, uh, the, the registrant, a notification that there is something which is against the policy and we can um, stop the delegation of the domain name. But we're giving them the time and uh, they are taking actions. If they are responding and taking actions, then the domain name itself, it, it stays there as a registration there. But if not, they and they it happen, there are such cases when they do not respond, so we give additional days on trying to find the registrants, but there's, in, in some cases there are some fake registrants, etc. So we're uh, stopping the delegation of the domain name itself, so in this way. As for the child pornography or the child abuse, that happens to be uh, that immediately goes to the police and without any discussions, etc. So it's going and uh, the domain name registration is being blocked. There are some uh, cases uh, when we had the uh, adult uh, content and uh, we we received uh, throughout the year of our practice some some cases and alerts uh, of such cases that there are some websites which we need to pay attention to. But uh, what we did in in this group, it's not like just blocking or uh, closing the domain or revoking the delegation. But we reached out to the registrants actually and. Um, said that you need to put some uh, barrier. It's like the first page it comes that we do have an adult content. Please confirm that you are above 18 years old, etc. so that uh, it's not just closing the website itself, but it's putting a barrier so that those who are adults and they want to go to these websites, they still have that opportunity. I mean, we do not block in, in, in this sense of uh, happening. Uh, and uh, for the many years, uh, I would say that this model, um, working with this group, was uh, really helpful, and it doesn't um, make any complications uh, to bringing the harmful content uh, into their existence. So, 
Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Amenia. Um, the representative from Amenia gave a brief uh, experience of Amenia on the issue of harmful content um, and the way the way they are the process they are they are addressing the issue. Uh, the next one is Bolivia. Yes. Um, well, actually, we don't have, uh, except for the traditional laws that we have in our country, we don't have any particular regulation regarding um, harmful content um, in order to address it. Actually, we're discussing about it since, a cap I will say, a couple of years now. And uh, what we um, believe is that the, m the main effort that we should do is um, empowering, is uh, building capacity in the vulnerable groups, particularly in children, that actually uh, receive this kind of content, sometimes without anyone noticing. Uh, what we did, uh, not in a national level, but in a, in a, in a local one, I actually was involved in uh, writing the draft of a law, of a bill in, in, uh, in La Paz City, which is our, our main city in Bolivia. Um, and this law was aimed to regulate uh, harmful content in the internet cafes, internet rooms that we have all over the city. And um, the idea is that we force the owners of these places to provide um, uh, some sort of filters in, in order to prevent for the children to access this kind of harmful content. Not only pornography, but all of violent, violent content, for instance, and things like that. And in some other cases, when we, when, when they wanted to, to allow um, the the content for adult people, then uh, the regulation were forcing them to have separate spaces in order to warrant the the, the differential access, access for and, and protecting in that way uh, the children. Um, so again, we, we believe that one of the big steps we need to do is to, to, to build this capacity not only in the, in the children, but in the families, in all the community, in all the levels. But the other side is a little bit more tricky. We, um, there is always going to be the controversy, and, and that's something that I would like later to know about Armenia or some other experiences, but uh, it, it's going to be the controversy of who has the right, uh, who has the power, and who, who at, which are the procedures in order to block uh, any kind of content that, um, of course, should be or may be enforced by DNS blocking, by IP blocking or any other technical possibilities. But, but again, what we are worried is about the procedure because uh, we, what we don't want is that um, using that kind of procedure, then uh, we will happen to have in the future the possibility to receive different other kinds of, of, of blocking. Uh, like, uh, I don't know, uh, Political controversies brings up a lot of different kind of content, and that could be also be blocked using the same procedure. So that's something we need to discuss in order to have it all uh, f face it together. Thank you. Uh, thank you, um, 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 Bolivia, for sharing uh, your experience. Um, the next one is uh, Nepal. Do you have a representative from Nepal? No? Okay, the next one is uh, Cameroon. Any representative from Cameroon IGF? No. Then the next one is France. Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to participate in, in this session. Um, this um, is a crucial debate for democratic systems, which are continually um, trying to find balance between several uh, fundamental rights. Um, fighting harmful online, uh, content online is one of the key uh, priorities of the French and European digital agenda. Um, I would like to introduce um, three key points in this session. Uh, first, a critical look at the French context. 
context. Uh, at national level, we have a very proactive uh, public policy and a succession of controversial laws. Um, in parallel, we have a slow desire to uh, fortify uh, international collaboration in this field. Um, second, um, about the focus of regulation. Um, beyond content, we need to be able to regulate systems um, and algorithms um, to guarantee platform liability. And my third point is uh, how we can promote a civic approach among individual internet users. Um, first, about the, the French context. In the last two years, two laws with the aim to fight harmful content have been presented. In 2018, a law focusing on disinformation during elections was enacted and aims to better protect democracy against the different ways in which disinformation is spread intentionally. And a law aiming to tackle hate speech online is currently uh, being discussed in French Parliament. This text asks platforms to fortify uh, their moderation policies and to increase transparency. Criticism, criticism from civil society points to potential violation of freedom of expression because of um, three uh, particular uh, points. First, the broad and vague definition of the content included in these laws. Second, the window of time to remove this content. And third, the absence of the judge in the decision of removal. At the international level, France supports more harmonization of content regulation. Uh, France backed a digital char charter signed um, at the uh, G7, as well as the European, European and global initiatives, including uh, the Christ Church call. Um, this text uh, calls for more effort uh, from platforms and a better cooperation uh, between governments and platforms. About my second point, uh, which deals with the business model of these actors. Uh, their business model is not optimized for democracy. Uh, we have to think about the mechanisms uh, behind the spread of content. In particular, the rank ranking of content, the principle of user-generated content and moderation, and the standards and processes reg regarding ads. Moreover, the models and the users of platforms are not fixed. It, they evolve quickly. Uh, public authorities, civil society, and researchers must be able to follow these developments. For this reason, um, access to data and algorithms is a key point. Um, my third point um, focuses behind regulation on the need to empower civil society and individuals to bring a civic approach to their digital environment. In France, Renaissance Numérique, my think tank, uh, created the platform seriously.ong. Uh, uh, seriously is a tool and a method to empower NGOs and activists to face hate food, hate food online content. It encourages them to be active and to participate positively online. By providing content and advice, the platform seriously help rights defenders and NGOs to intervene in online discussions without polarizing the debate. We need to support more tools uh, like, uh, like this for all citizens to encourage civic values online. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, uh, France, for sharing your experience with us. I think from now on, we need to speed up in order to uh, meet the time because um, we are already about 19 minutes in, in our time. The next one is uh, Lebanon. Yeah. Hello, uh, my name is Zena Abu I'm representing the Lebanese IGF, but 
I'm uh, also, uh, I work for the uh, Lebanese incumbent telecom operator, uh, and I want to, to uh, just briefly uh, describe what's happening in Lebanon and uh, what uh, are the different stakeholders uh, taking as actions to, uh, to remedy for the uh, online uh, harmful content. Well, a study conducted by a major uh, university in Lebanon confirmed uh, the increase in number of children who have access to online platform, uh, among which war, games, social platforms, and other. The study showed the following uh, figures. 66% of the students interviewed admitted having strangers on their social media platform. 23% admitted having met those strangers uh, live. 54% uh, admitted having been subject to violent material. 19% of the students received messages from extremist groups. So uh, these numbers clearly highlight the risk that children are encountering uh, through the internet without the proper tools uh, and means to protect themselves. Uh, these figures cre uh, clearly confirm the dangers that our children face online, as navigating this space is an in an unsafe way can expose them to threats uh, such as extremism, bullying, uh, extortion, and other. Hence, the importance of protecting them and educating them to act smartly online. Uh, many entities from different uh, stakeholders uh, carried out uh, initiatives in Lebanon. Uh, I, will, I will tell you a little bit about these uh, initiatives. First, we have the Higher Council for Childhood uh, at the Ministry of Social Affairs uh, in collaboration with ISPs, security agencies, civil society, and ourselves at, uh, as uh, operator and uh, uh, internet provider, we are working on developing a tool for, t for teachers in schools. It consists of a material to be used by teachers to spread awareness among students about online security. These same stakeholders engaged in a common awareness campaign at schools in the different areas of Lebanon. An awareness campaign also was conducted in municipalities, including in the rural areas, to, to strengthen awareness of parents of the risks that their children may encounter while surfing. Ogero, the public incumbent operator in Lebanon and the main internet provider, introduced the parental control service within its offerings. When activated, it can prevent access to sites that are not suitable for children, such as viol violence, drugs, pornography. We also are work working on awareness campaign with the different Lebanese schools, as well as holding activity days uh, at our premises for children aged between 7 and 12 years old to raise their awareness on the risks that they might, uh, might face online. Uh, one uh, additional uh, initiative that I would like to share with you is called Layle Lalayle, which is in English uh, an evening for the family. Uh, this, has, uh, this has been initiated three years ago and it's happening every year. Uh, it's, it's, it emphasizes the importance of fam family gatherings and discussions that can be undertaken and activities that can be carried out away from the digital tools annoyance. It's like a digital detox uh, where schools support the schools uh, in Lebanon by giving as homework for this evening only family activities as contribution to this meeting of quality between the, the family members. The family will meet, they will talk, exchange ideas, parents can discuss the problems of their children and uh, children will be encouraged to talk about their fears and maybe they can uh, tell uh, the, their parents, they can be more, uh, uh, um, let's say, safe to tell their parents if 
they are facing something that they don't uh, feel good about online. Uh, and the last thing I would like to share is that there is an NGO in Lebanon called Himaya. Uh, it's uh, developing a tool uh, to be distributed to children. Uh, it's, uh, it will be distrib distributed for free during uh, the awareness activities and events. And, uh, it, and it will be also distributed within the uh, points of sales of the operators uh, in Lebanon. It's uh, an adaptation of a French tool uh, to, be, uh, 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 to raise awareness about uh, all the, uh, uh, the threats online uh, during the summer vacation. Thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Lebanon. Um, for sharing your experience uh, with us. The next one is um, USA. Do we have? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. My name is Melinda Clem, and I am the co-chair of IGF USA. Uh, I also work for the domain registry affiliates, so I can talk uh, about some of the actual things that we do to remove harmful content as well. Uh, at IGF USA, we've been talking about harmful content in a, from a number of perspectives over the last couple of years. Uh, we've had numerous sessions. Uh, but before I dive into that, I just want to establish that there are two relevant laws uh, that we're operating under in the United States. Uh, the first is the First Amendment to our, the U.S. Constitution uh, that notes that uh, our Congress cannot infringe and enact any laws that uh, in any way abridge free speech, uh, but there are uh, noted exceptions to that. Uh, less or no protection is provided to harmful content, things that you know elicit imminent harm, uh, child pornography, the, the types of harmful content we are talking here. So there is definitely some uh, limitations there. Uh, the second relevant for the technology sector is uh, Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. Uh, what this does is provides intermediary liability. Let me break down what those two words mean. Um, and I'll put it in the, con the context of my company that might make it a little bit easier. Um, so as a domain registry um, or a registrar, uh, data centers hosting companies, um, we aren't actually creating content, right? We're um, just acting in as some type of intermediary, a uh, facilitator, uh, but not actually generating content and in some cases not even hosting it. Uh, so what Section 30 does it is, is it um, gives us some flexibility to um, make a judgment call and remove harmful content um, if we do find it or if it has been, uh, if we've been alerted to it by third parties and it's been evaluated uh, and it doesn't, um, and then it doesn't allow us to um, have any sort of legal action taken against us for that um, as well it doesn't um, require us uh, to, to definitively act. So the, with that context, uh, we talk about this at IGF USA, um, and it is the general consensus over the last few years that we do not want any new or additional regulation, uh, that we'd like to take care of this uh, within industry and, and best practices and enhance the things that are done today. Uh, one of the things that can be enhanced and be a lot better uh, is transparency. Uh, that especially when you get out of the infrastructure layer that I've been talking about and you get into platform providers and social media companies, uh, you especially need uh, more transparency into processes, uh, the decision making, um, why they are or aren't acting, and it, how much, you know, what, what sort of volume are they acting in. Uh, so that's what we mean by transparency. Um, and we would like, uh, in general, more good actors. Uh, for example, uh, Affilius works with, as, as do several other uh, me technical members of IGF USA, uh, a number of parties that, uh, that we, we trust, and uh, like the IWF um, that we work with, and they can bring content to us we know that they've done the work, that they are a credible, valid source, and we can then act immediately 
uh, to remove that domain name so that all of that content can go away. And that's something that we see with a number of US-based registries and registrars and, and hosting companies, uh, but certainly not all. And this is an area across the globe that uh, more people that could work with organizations, these uh, sort of uh, trusted third parties uh, is a great way to improve uh, and facilitate and expedite uh, removing harmful content. Thank you, United States, uh, for sharing your experience. Uh, the next one is uh, Nigeria. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, moderator. Uh, my name is YZ Yao, and I'm sitting next to my chair, uh, who is uh, Mary Oduma. Um, I think that the word uh, harmful content um, uh, uh, is a bag full of a spectrum of uh, many different uh, types of contents that are negative, uh, which include uh, pornography, uh, child abuse, um, hate speech, uh, disinformation, um, and so forth. So an effective way to deal with that is to really separate each in its own uh, 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 dockets so that you don't uh, uh, create confusion or create a situation in which the freedom of speech and so forth can uh, be abridged. Uh, in Nigeria, uh, we have the uh, Cybercrime uh, Act, which was signed in 2015, and uh, it's provide explicit uh, provisions on the child uh, pornography, and other uh, related uh, crimes. Uh, it provides specific um, uh, uh, punishment, uh, including the jail term of uh, uh, 15 years and so forth. And they find that ranges from about uh, uh, $500 to uh, something uh, upper hand. Uh, however, uh, it's not been very functional, um, perhaps because the coordinating body uh, has not been fully uh, uh, constituted, and uh, I don't think anybody has been uh, brought to book on that uh, context. Uh, it also has a provision on uh, racism and hate speech and so forth. Again, uh, uh, nobody has been uh, tried uh, that, of course. A number of journalists have been uh, arrested and detained uh, on that basis, and that is why it's important to uh, make suppression. Now, um, over the last three years, there have been attempts at the National Assembly uh, to introduce a separate provision I in mean, legislation uh, to tackle the um, hate speech. Uh, this has been uh, generally opposed uh, not because people are not concerned about uh, harmful content or the effect and consequences of hate speech, but because uh, people are suspicious about the, the reason uh, for such um, legislation. But there's also the fear that it's one way uh, to deal with the demand by government to control the social media, which again, there is a separate uh, legislation that is being uh, processed in the uh, National Assembly to deal specifically with um, uh, social media. Now, one of the uh, problems that people point about this uh, proposed legislation is about the fact that we don't even have uh, nationally accepted definition of what is hate speech, what does contribute the hate speech. So without uh, defining what the offense is, then it becomes problematic to provide the legislation against what you haven't really uh, defined, and therefore it can be subject to arbitrary uh, prosecution, and that the, uh, 
people are also pointing out that uh, in many countries where you have uh, legislations against hate speech, often it's the victims of hate speech that tend to be prosecuted rather than the perpetrators of uh, uh, hate speech. And so these uh, suspicions have over this uh, uh, mobilized uh, public opinion that have been able to defeat the efforts at the national level, at uh, the National Assembly to legislate on those matters. But uh, as I said, currently, right now, there are two uh, bills that are, are going uh, legislative processes in the country, um, one to do with the hate speech and one to specifically about the uh, social media. Uh, a number of the partners in the Nigerian uh, IGF have also been doing a lot of work in terms of uh, public awareness, uh, particularly about uh, child protection online. And I remember that over the two years, uh, Madam Chair had been uh, addressing quite a number of those uh, 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 platforms, which is to raise awareness. Because often the problem is not just that um, people are exposed, but people uh, are not clear, are not even aware of how they get into the danger of uh, getting stuck by the other people. Uh, there are also a number of other uh, uh, NGOs that have run uh, observatory, for instance, uh, this is an observatory about uh, monitoring gender violence online. And I think that this is an especially important component of the uh, campus content. Uh, in the context of Nigeria, we know a number of young girls who have uh, been killed, not just uh, uh, being exposed to harassment and negative content, but have also lost their lives uh, through uh, uh, such content. So that is very important uh, to pay attention to such uh, uh, negative content. So there are partners who are monitoring online and uh, they respond to it uh, either through reporting to police and security agencies or through raising a, a public voice so that they can shame and uh, uh, bring out those people, perpetrators, and uh, expose them and make them able to be prosecuted and so forth. There are also other partners who engage in monitoring and countering hate speech. Um, and I think that this uh, stating is that uh, often it is better to evoke moral sanctions on people who perpetrate uh, hate speech and so forth, then subject them to uh, legislative and legal instruments, which uh, might take many years to do so. And often, sometimes, the, the consequences uh, would have occurred and would have been impossible to uh, retrive, you know, because if uh, hate speech results in violence, that's catalyzed violence, sorry, people do Sorry, Dr. Uh, yeah, yeah, OK, so but... just final. Uh, 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 Point. Uh, I think that the, uh, generally the direction that we move in the country is about increasing public awareness uh, about this and uh, also working with uh, platform providers like Twitter, uh, Facebook to provide opportunity for people to report uh, and to demand that the harmful content be removed on, online. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yao, for presenting the Nigerian uh, side of the harmful content. Uh, the next one is Yurof. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, and good afternoon to everybody. Uh, Yorodig is the regional IGF for Europe. But it's not only for the European Union, it's for the geographic Europe. So we have uh, uh, like 50 plus countries participating. And uh, that's why I can't really talk about legislation so much because legislation is very much a national affair. Uh, but I, I, I give you an idea of the messages that the uh, Eurodig in June uh, issued. Uh, after, after uh, discussions and deliberations. Uh, of course, the, in Europe, a lot of the talk of the harm, harm, harmful content, which is a sort of euphemism, actually, harmful content, uh, has been uh, focusing on uh, 
interference from uh, certain governments mm -hmm. into European elections and referenda. Uh, it's also, uh, it was pointed out at Eurodic that there's, there's an interplay between populism and technology. And uh, that means that the extremist and hateful online content keeps, keeps growing. Uh, these are some of the problems in Europe we try to try to tackle. The, uh, the, the, uh, at at Eurodic, we actually we had a couple of workshops, which led to the main, to the plenary on harmful content, and uh, the one plenary was about journalism in the forefront uh, uh, against uh, the uh, uh, against harmful content. And uh, it was uh, it was noted that the this is something that uh, the harmful content and and uh, disinformation needs to be tackled quickly. We need quick uh, methods and quick means to to get grips in grips with that. Uh, there are uh, rapid alert systems. To, uh, to flag disinformation. Uh, for instance, the European, European Union has, a, has a, uh, as part of this external uh, affairs service, there's a disinformation, uh, anti-disinformation unit, which, uh, which keeps track on various disinformation uh, efforts in, in, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in Europe. And, uh, and helps journalists and others to, to tackle that. Uh, one general observation was that disinformation uh, it cannot be tackled by one actor alone, but requires a multi-stakeholder approach. Uh, this means fact-checking activities by journalists and others, and, uh, and we should get more collaboration between media outlets and online platforms. And, and if, you, if we uh, see the news uh, during the last year, we actually see that the, the platforms are coming closer to understanding the, the, the problems of the traditional media. And, uh, and in various ways, the, uh, we, we are, I hope, uh, approaching a situation where where the, the, those better relations with, will lead less disinformation on the online platforms. The, uh, going on, the second, uh, second uh, workshop was about media literacy, which is really the, the necessary counterpart to any efforts to, to tackle uh, uh, harmful content and disinformation. Uh, what we did was actually the, we, we ha had a game, a bad news game, where participants uh, were put in a role of creators of fake news, disinformation, and they actually they learned how to create uh, effective disinformation, which uh, which was a good e exercise because by by doing this by 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 playing the role, you actually learn uh, how to how to discover uh, the, that sort of uh, that sort of content. Uh, finally, it's uh, at, at the pl at plenary session we we talked about the regular regula regulation regulatory approaches in various European countries. And, uh, and identified that the regulation minefield, because as everybody knows, I mean, you have to walk a very thin line to, uh, to uh, avoid tampering uh, freedom of expression. At the same time, you have to try to, to get, uh, uh, get the uh, di disinformation uh, makers into, into, into order. The, uh, 
it's, uh, we also noted that uh, the, as legislative efforts are going on in, in many European countries, but it, it's, it's, uh, it, it's not only new laws, you also have to consider the existing regulation and human rights, human rights framework so that uh, whether they could be used better, they could be interpreted better because we are really in a new situation. Uh, I think I stop here. And, uh, in, in Thank you so I much, can... Euro DIG, um, uh, for sharing your experience. And um, the next one is uh, Italian IGF. Okay, thank you. Um, how much time do we have? I don't want to be... We have only 12 minutes left. So, and so how many... And, uh, we are just on one policy question. Okay, so I'll so, try to keep it... But before going, maybe I will give the panelists one, one minute each. Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll try to keep it into three, four minutes maximum. Four? Okay, then five. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> So um, I'm here representing the Italian IGF, part of the organizing committee. The Italian IGF was just held at the end of October in Turin. Um, and um, on, the, on um, harmful content, uh, there were several sessions dedicated to that issues, and I just wanted to flag to you five of, uh, of um, the points that were raised during the, the sessions. It was also quite indicative to see how much this topic you know, along the different uh, IGFs during the years became way more prominent and attracted more participants and more um, action calls on those issues. So uh, the first was uh, brought uh, was the um, cyberbull, cyberbullying law that was enacted in 2017. And that was something that um, was particularly um, targeting um, um, youth and, uh, the, and, uh, and the harassment and cyberbullying that was uh, codified in the law um, with provisions to um, have um, 48 hours uh, blocking and within the platforms that to uh, block the content in cyberbullying within 48 hours once they were reported uh, through uh, the, the law enforcement officials. And, um, and um, this has been you know, one of the um, most uh, impactful um, measures that have been presented. Another couple of, event, of, of, of uh, measures were done by the um, regulatory agency for communication, so the independent regulator of media and communication. They had uh, launched first in 2014 an, uh, an, um, an observatory uh, on hate speech, to monitor hate speech online, and um, and um, and this one also uh, had two um, important elements on that. He basically asked the platforms to do a quarterly report of their activities to counter hate speech online, and then. Um, invited all the uh, internet actors to um, provide um, evidence of their campaigns and sort of literacy uh, initiatives that they will do to counter hate speech. So this, this is where to make it. So this is a regulation from, it's not a law, it's a, it's a regulation from the agency. Um, um, probably the most interesting one that uh, was presented at the Italian IGF was uh, the process to reach uh, to a law that codifies in the penal uh, code revenge porn as a crime. And that was done through a grassroots initiative that started by young internet users. They started coalescing through Facebook groups and then they launched a change.org campaign which uh, reached 100,000 uh, signatures. And that um, had so much, um, they made so much noise through the media, also thanks to, thanks, unfortunately, to some high profile cases where victims of um, revenge porn uh, that were harassed because private videos were shared on WhatsApp, on Facebook, 
um, there were two high profile cases where the victims they committed suicide and that uh, um, raised a lot of the stakes and attention to that. This law has been passed in May 2018 uh, with um, 40, 491 supporting uh, votes and it has very uh, harsh provisions. So charges go up to six years in jails, fines uh, that uh, are, you know, the fines increment every time that you share uh, this content. And even if you are receiving this content, you know, you can be liable for that. So the law is, has been quite aggressive in, uh, in addressing this, uh, this, this, this issue. And um, the last initiative that uh, is, is also a grassroots initiative, and I think it's, it's important to flag it here, um, is called um, Hostile Words. And um, in Italian, it will sound like parole ostili, which is basically words or styles. Um, it, doesn't, it doesn't work that effectively, but basically it's, uh, it's, um, it's a platform that has um, involves over 300 journalists, uh, social media um, um, staff, managers, politicians, professors. They have communication campaigns where they basically flag um, hate speech cases. They use Twitter. They have a Twitter hashtag of Parole Ostili. And they target everything. They target from the politicians to the journal's article, and where they say, look, you know, th there is a fine line between style, so you may criticize, but then it can turn into um, harmful content, hate speech. So this is something that um, is working, and it, it suddenly they got a lot of profile attention in the Italian media. Um, even myself, as an internet user, I come across you know, when you read uh, the headlines of a newspaper or, or some news shared on Facebook, well, oftentimes they are flagged or reposted by these platforms to, to, to point out, well, what's wrong with that? You know, and uh, to, to have a discussion on that one. So these are the four uh, best practices that have been uh, um, uh, brought up. Um, the last two, the revenge porn and the uh, hostile words, they were quite interesting because they were all basically done by under 30s um, internet users, very young. Um, and some of them, they intervened in the IGF, they actually they couldn't travel because, well, they are 16, they have to go to school. So they joined uh, remotely, but they, it was incredible to see how committed they were and how aware they, they were. So they didn't wait for a law. They created, uh, they created this um, platform. And then when they saw that actually the law was needed, they campaigned and they reached uh, the signatures and they went all the way through having a law enacted. So um, that's, that's the report from the Italian IGF. Thank, uh, thank you, Italy. Unfortunately, the time allocated for this session is uh, quite, quite uh, small. Uh, had it been, we know it could have been longer than this. So um, we still have a number of question areas. Let me merge the question areas together. Then I will give the panelists at least half a minute to one minute to comment on each of them. So the areas are diverse. Um, what role, uh, the, the question is what, what role should internet platforms play in defining the standards for acceptable content in light of freedom of speech? Then how can globally accepted standards be developed? This one of the question. Then the next one, what kind of collaboration could be created among internet platforms and the media outlets to fight disinformation and fake news? And the last question is, where is the middle ground between increasing demands for proactive content policing by digital platforms and the necessary neutrality and legal uh, certainty for the platforms. So I'm joining about uh, four questions together. And um, let's start by uh, Jafan. Please, do you kindly comment maybe one, one minute or less? Okay. Okay. Yes, I want to suggest okay. that uh, if you comment on one, the other person comment on the other one, since, uh, so that it will yeah, not be yeah. the same thing you comment on. This Just take one and comment on it, please. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so. <clears throat> uh, so in Japan, also, we have some uh, uh, 
uh, argument, something like this, but uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. I understand that the education awareness, something like that is very important, but it takes too much time. Then, uh, so we have to think about uh, 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 aspect of that. Uh, we already have a crisis in front of us today. Uh, sometimes China program or something, the, uh, there are some big teams uh, uh, located in the, uh, some suburbs. So, so <clears throat> I think uh, we need some uh, international cooperation to find out who make it and who located it. So uh, in Japan, which is located in Japan, we can easily to delete it, erase it. But uh, in other countries, it's not easy. So <clears throat> uh, only who make it, well, who lend the supper uh, is not easy to identify who it is. So uh, at least we, if we, we can uh, find out who is uh, its name or address and phone number or something, we can um, uh, arrest him and make it, uh, uh, sorry, uh, delete the, uh, uh, the harmful or uh, illegal content. So um, hosting providers, uh, content providers, or uh, data center or uh, CDN operators uh, should be uh, cooperate uh, to the uh, things like that. So before that, we need to uh, system or something, uh, a kind of international uh, data exchange something. Thank you, Japan. Uh, and um, the model we want to follow now, we don't need to go sequentially. Um, any one of us that uh, feels he has uh, what to comment on the question, uh, policy question can comment. I have already, um, uh, I have already mentioned the question areas, um, which includes what role should internet platforms play and uh, how can we develop acceptable global standards and uh, what kind of collaboration could be created among internet platforms where is the middle between increasing demands and uh, uh, net neutrality and uh, legal certainty for the platforms so anyone that feels he has what to comment we don't need to go sequentially because we don't have time okay uh, just one point, uh, very short. Uh, concerning um, international collaboration, uh, we have to give a concrete role to civil society and to exit from a bilateral discussion between uh, governments and platforms. Uh, the return of experience on uh, Christ Church call and G uh, the charter of G7 was that uh, civil society um, arrive at the final of discussion. Thank you, Prince. So anybody, okay, Nigeria. Yeah, uh, I just want to respond to the issue of uh, platform uh, providers. Uh, I think that while they can uh, develop technical solutions and uh, uh, also contribute through their own standards because I know a couple of them have uh, already set up the standard. But I think it's uh, important to uh, and, uh, I mean, emphasize the points that we should not surrender the issue of defining what is harmful and so forth by, uh, to them. Uh, in particular, uh, countries like Nigeria where you have uh, multicultural, multilinguistic uh, thing, that uh, often it's very difficult for someone who doesn't understand the cultural nuances to understand what uh, some of these uh, uh, communication uh, practices uh, implies. And therefore, uh, I think the important thing is to think about a much more inclusive process of uh, addressing the issue than the uh, sectoral uh, strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Nigeria. Then any, anybody? Yes. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you. And, and again, this is Melinda from IGF USA. Um, I would just like to, to go on to the final point there that um, coming from the United States where, where all of these large platform companies are actually headquartered, um, I, I think it's safe for me to say that we do not want to, to take the role of the ultimate arbiter of defining what is content, uh, that, that that is not a responsibility that uh, we want or to believe that we should have. <laughs> Thank you, United States. So, okay, go ahead, Europe, DIG. Thank you. Uh, 
what kind of collab collaboration? Uh, many kinds, but I would say that we have a very good example from this IGF actually, the, the uh, WWW contract proposed by uh, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. And uh, already, if you look at the website, it's already probably hundreds of, of actors endorsing it. And of course, this happens in the presence of governments on a very high level. So I think that that sort of really uh, luminous <laughs> uh, initiatives are, are, are necessary to, to uh, tackle not only harmful contact, content, but actually many other ills that we have in the present system. Thank you. Thank you. Then Italy, go ahead. One minute or less. Yes. Okay. Less than that. Um, already this discussion, I think it flags um, an interesting uh, um, landscape. So there is an asymmetry here. On one side, you have users across the globe that oh no, they all are at the same level as users. And then, depending on where this user is connecting and is using the services, there is a different level of protections. And this asymmetry, we speak a lot about uh, the digital divide. It's actually the digital divide itself, this one. And this digital divide, it cross um, beyond the lines of rich and poor countries. Because, you know, you have users that are very much exposed to these issues in rich countries, um, and users as much as users in poor countries. So it's clear that you know, if you're lucky enough, you were born in Italy now and you're 13 and your boyfriend shares pictures of you online, well, you have more protection if your boyfriend or your girlfriend does that if you were born you know, in any other country, maybe in the US that you don't have this law. And, and I think this asymmetry it's something that points to the need of, well, the discussion that we had here at the, at the forum and, uh, and, and on one th some, sometimes you don't need a law to help you. Uh, you the, the cases that the Italian IGF raised of grassroots initiatives where they, you know, they basically set up a manifesto and uh, identified what could be its speech is very effective. But sometimes, you know, um, to go across this asymmetry, you need to take the players at the global level and say, well, you know, you should probably do something to respect those standards, regardless of where you're operating. Otherwise, there is a divide there. Thank you, Italy. Please, um, do we have any comment uh, or any input from the audience to the panelists? In the, in the absence of any question to the panelists, do we have do we, need, do we have any further comment? Uh, I don't know whether the, there's any comment from online or question online. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, the panelists. Thank you, the participants, for giving uh, me the maximum cope. Okay. Og. Thank you. Go just, last one, <laughs> just last one comment. I, I, I wanted to... Coming about our experience that we're going off from in my country, in Bolivia, as you know, as in many other countries, we're coming out from an election. And that's the perfect place where uh, a lot of uh, misinformation, fake news comes up, right? And uh, I think as a community, we learned a lot about this process. And we're ready to face it again, with a, maybe, maybe with a different view, in terms of actually convene everybody to have any sort of, of, of of platform or a strategy to to combat to tackle all uh, this fake, fake news that we received a lot. So, I think um, our uh, local uh, IGF is going to be the best uh, place for us to continue the discussion and uh, to come up with different new ideas to 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 face this. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank everybody that had commented. I think we have to take three messages out from my own, from what I've recorded is first, the grassroots, second, definition, third, the awareness, and then the collaboration that everybody must join hand to see that we 
tackle her speech online. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. The panel is uh, closed down. Thank you. Okay, and just um, uh, closing remarks, uh, I would like to thank um, Anya for her great uh, coordination of this work throughout the whole year that we've been doing uh, and all your efforts. Unfortunately, Anya lost her voice, so she cannot step in to talk. So thank you very much for all the hard work that you're doing, Anya. Thank you very thank, much. Thank for you. And thank you for the makeshift uh, moderator. Yes. You've done so well. Thank you very much. Thank you.